In this advanced rigging tutorial, we are having a look at how to separate the lower part of our pants to accommodate the position of the foot. Now, I have my leg here, and as I did with the sleeve, I'm going to have to make a separate part for the line at the bottom of my pant leg right there. So I'm going to create a new drawing layer by pressing Ctrl R or Command R for Mac. I am going to name it um, Line Pants Front and press Enter. So I have my layer here just as I did with the other pieces. I'm going to go into the layer properties and set my drawing layer as apply embedded pivot on parent peg or I can go and use the script if you guys still have the scripting toolbar right here so TV enable drawing pivot I can now create a peg on that layer and I'm going to attach it to the full leg front and for the time being I'm going to connect my drawing layer on top of the leg front drawing layer just so I can go and draw my art on there. So I'm going to find my art layer inside the timeline. I'm going to create a new empty drawing and I'm going to rename this drawing so I can right click go under drawings and I have rename drawing or control D and I'm going to name this one QF underscore one. I'm going to do the same thing for my drawing in the front view. I'm going to create a new empty drawing and I'm going to name it F underscore one. Now from here, I'm going to extend the exposure of both my drawings all the way up to the end. So I, I get no gaps in terms of drawing exposition. And here on that first drawing, currently I have nothing on there. So I'm going to go grab the uh, line at the very bottom of my leg, or I could go and draw it right away into uh, the drawing layer that I have. So I'm going to copy and paste here since it's a really small section. I could have uh, just really easily drawn it. I'm going to try and keep the line as close to, as possible to the original art. And again, I want to make it a little bit wider just so I get uh, more freedom when I go and uh, rotate the entire thing. So I won't need to bother too much about the ends of my lines uh, at this point, but if you want to go and make everything nice and round, you can go ahead and do so. And now I have a line here. Uh, what I want to do is be able to have the section of my pants a little bit longer so that when I go and uh, pivot this, if I go and place my pivot point on the line, I want to be able to have the foot lifting up and have the line following like this and cutting off everything that's going to come here. So I'm going to make my pant leg longer and have a mask that will come and cut everything that goes under that line. So in order to do that, I need to first create my mask. I'm going to go under the paint bucket get the stroke tool and from here again you want to have show strokes mode on by pressing K I'm going to trace my mask that I'm going to come and connect to the edges of my line using the contour editor with the uh, snap to contour the little magnet option that we have I'm going to come and connect these two edges. I don't want it to be much bigger than this at some point. Uh, we're not really going to have to uh, get too much movement on this piece right here. 
And then I'm going to go paint with my little neon green color that I have here called Planning Ahead. Obviously this color isn't used anywhere inside of my character, but I'm going to be using it for masks or for creating things that I'm not necessarily going to see inside of my rig. Now I have my mask. I am seeing it in my drawing layer, obviously, because it is connected directly to my leg front comp. And the second step that I need to do once this piece is created, I want to go and make the uh, portion of my leg to be longer than this, because if I turned, if I turn this right now, you can see that it's not uh, it's not continuing here, so we want to get a nice uh, straight line here that cuts only when it crosses my line. So I'm going to go inside the leg front layer. Uh, if we remember correctly, we have a uh, merge system here in both of our layers. So the line is on the line art, the color is on the color art. Since I'm going to modify this, I'll just go and get rid of my color art for now and I'll come and repaint it afterwards. I'm going to try and keep it as close as possible to what I had originally and make it a little bit longer so that it comes about to the center here of my mask. Now I'm going to repaint this and put the color again in the back on the color art. Now if I go back here and I can test it ahead, um, if I come and rotate this, uh, there is no gap that is created anymore. So that is good. Now I need the line to be visible and to be cut by the surface of my leg. So I'm going to go into my node library and I'm going to go and get a cutter. And now I need to separate the color from the line art for my patch here. I need to have just the line that is being cut by the entire leg front and I need my mask to go and cut the other portion. So one thing I could do again is go and place the mask in the color art and leave the line on the line art and separate my uh, two layers like this. Another way that I could do it, however, is to use a node called the color override. Now, essentially what the color override allows you to do is separate uh, two or three or however many colors you would want to separate using this module. So it has multiple functions, but that is one of uh, the functions that we use the most in rigging. So if I bring in the color override, you can see that it has three ports sitting on top of it. If you click on each different node that you have just above your uh, color override, you're going to be able to see which what each of these do. So in our case we're going to use the one called image so always the third port over on the right and I'm going to connect the line of my pants and I'm just going to connect it to the leg front for now. Now you can see when I select my color override it sort of highlights in a bluish color what I have uh, inside of my uh, node, so basically what is being read uh, on my composite. And if I click on my layer properties, you can see here I have multiple uh, windows, multiple boxes that I have. I've got my palettes right here. I've got the colors of my palettes that are here. And one section that is going to interest us for this is the render selected colors only. So I'm going to click on that tab and here I have the option to drag in some colors in here. So I'm going to select right away the render selected colors 
And right now you can see uh, as I chose this option, it completely removed any information that I had here because right now none of the colors that are in my palette are inside of my render selected colors box. So essentially it isn't reading any color since I have nothing. So if I bring in my line, you can see that now the highlighted portion of my color override is just the line. If I were to bring in my planning ahead color, now I would get to see both. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a color override that reads just the line. And then I'm going to bring a second one that reads the mask that I have. So again, under render selected colors only, render selected colors, and I'm going to go and get the planning ahead color. You can either drag it in or press the little arrow on the side to bring it in. And now I have my render selected colors only uh, that reads the mask here and I have the line separated from the entire thing here. So what I'm going to do first is cut the leg by my mask. So I'm just going to get rid of both of these connections. I can even rename my color overrides um, COOV for color override and I'm going to name this one line just to make sure that I remember what these are. And I'm going to have COOV underscore mask. I like to keep everything renamed just to make everything clear, whether it's me or somebody else that is going into my rig. Uh, once it's done, it's clearer that way to know, okay, what exactly are these connections without having to go into every single uh, box of layer properties that you have in your rig. Now I have my cutter here. I want my line to be on top of my pant leg. And I want it to be cut, so I'm putting it in the uh, port over on the right. I want it to be cut by the entire leg. So I'm going to bring in the connection all the way up to the leg. And now I have the uh, opposite of what I want to happen. So I'm going to go and invert my cutter from the layer properties of my cutter. So now I have this here and my line as you can see is cut by the entire surface of my leg so I can have the uh, the entire thing cut in there and still rotating properly. And now I want everything that's under that line to be cut by my mask, which at the moment isn't connected to anything. So I'm going to go and get my cutter. So my second cutter right here. And I want the output of my leg. Essentially, this is the connection that has my entire leg. If I unplug it, as you can see, it gets rid of the art of my leg. So I want this to be cut. So I'm going to come and connect in the right port the, um, the entire art of my leg and I want it to be cut by the mask. So just like that, now I have a line that I can come and move to adjust if the uh, foot, for example, goes up like this. I can come and modify the position of my pants and that makes it uh, a whole lot more easier to adjust than having to redraw every single time your pant line uh, and you end up having like 30 different drawings. So this is really helpful and you can then apply it to your other leg, apply the same system and don't forget as well to uh, add the art as well to complete 
your front view. We want to be able to have it available in all views. So apply this to your character's pants and I will see you in the next step.